Yes, thank you. Next up is 2020 CF 2603, State of Florida versus Sarah Boone. Uh, Mr. Lake, you're here on behalf of JAC. I am. All right, and Ms. Cashman, you're here on, uh, as one of the attorneys on the case. Um, I am, Your Honor. I'm assuming that like the last attorney, I will be permitted to stay seated because of the microphone yes. issue. Thank you. Although I do recognize uh, you're probably like me, it's hard to argue while you're seated. It, it, it's, very, it's a very unnatural feel. Um, who else is here on um, Ms. Boone's case? Frank Bankowitz on behalf of Ms. Boone. Judge, I was, I believe I said in my notes here, attorney number seven, but I think I was actually attorney number six on the case. I've had the case the longest of the three of us that are appearing before the court now. All right, thank you. And Mr. Hobson, you were uh, court appointed to Ms. Boone at some point during her saga as well. Yes, Your Honor, after Mr. Banco was withdrew, I was appointed. All right. So we have all three of your bills, and I know JAC had indicated they had no objection to Ms. Cashman's bill, but I did not get um, a similar statement with regard to Mr. Bankowitz or Ms. Ho Mr. Hobson, so I thought I needed to have a hearing with all three of you present. I am, right. uh, Mr. Lake? I would agree, Your Honor, there is an objection here because essentially what we're at at this point is this, this is compensation and it's test of flat fee because there's three attorneys involved. So there's no, there's no line item objections per se because these are all flat fee bills, but we're basically objecting on the basis that that the, the total compensation here is going to exceed the flat fee to some extent. And I will tell you that I am very familiar with Ms. Boone's case because she has gone through um, many, many attorneys and um, has, according to Judge Cranick's order, sabotaged those relationships. And uh, uh, accordingly, uh, uh, attorneys needed to withdraw and new attorneys were appointed. And I do recognize that a lot of work was done um, for Ms. Boone. So we will start um, with Mr. Bankowitz, then move to Mr. Hobson, and then to Ms. Cashman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, basically, I had the case for a little over a year. I had 175 hours in the case, including actually 45 hours at the jail with the defendant. Um, when I received the case, I got a, a box of uh, Crazy information, I'll put it that way. Uh, and it was an entire file box, and it took weeks to go through it, categorize it, and kind of figure out what was going on in the case at that point in time. She originally had a privately uh, retained attorney, and I basically received his case and his file because all of the other court appointed attorneys before me, I believe, had waived any attorney's fees, uh, and because they did basically nothing on the case. Uh, the three of us did a lot of work in the case. As I said, I did 175 hours, you know, and even at the $75 an hour compensation ratio, we're looking at $14,000. Uh, spent a lot of time with Ms. Boone and uh, a lot of time on the case. So I'm requesting a flat fee in this case. All right, thank you, Mr. Hobson. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. Your Honor, I got the case from Mr. Bankowitz, and uh, I got the same information. The information Mr. Bankowitz just recited that he had and reviewed, and in addition, of course, his information on top of all of that. I spent some time with the defendant at the jail, I spent a tremendous amount of time with the investigator reviewing the case, talking about uh, discovery experts and so forth. I spent a tremendous amount of time with a, pro uh, pro a putative, uh, well, a proposed expert, um, Dr. Linda DeRay, that it turns out the defendant didn't like her. I thought she'd be great. We, we talked for dozens of hours, almost daily, extensive periods of time coming up with a um, theory of defense or theories of defense. Um, 
at the uh, impact. And you, you combine the information from the expert and force attorney that was privately uh, involved and uh, took the case to the right up to the edge for trial and then had to back out. Uh, so I have that information, those boxes or box of information Mr. Bankowitz talked about. I had those, I had to go through those. Uh, I gave all that material to Ms. Cashman plus my information on top of that. Spent a lot of time interviewing people about uh, how they'd respond if they were jurors. So I was looking at the case from all angles. Um, I had the case from, um, I believe, um, September 23 uh, until uh, May uh, 24. Uh, I would say conservatively, any lawyer that had this case can tell you easily they spend at least an hour to two hours on this case every single day. Given the information coming in from Ms. Boone, the matter she wanted dealt with, her theory on the law versus our theory on it was a constant battle going back and forth. We had to deal with the gaslighting. Um, and um, I told Judge Cranick at the time that I withdrew that I just, it's just, was too much. Um, this case required at least two lawyers. I told that to Judge Craney, plus possibly an assistant. I see now the case has three lawyers, um, plus experts that we work at getting, plus investigators. So everything we're doing now, we attempted to do. We made every effort to do all those things. Um, this um, we now has custody of Files belonging to myself, Ms. Cashman, and Mr. Benkowitz. We did just to put in a tremendous amount of work. It, it taxed every fiber in your body and the bodies of the assistants or any person that worked with you on, on this matter. And I think Platy, for each of the attorney, would be exceedingly reasonable judge. And I heard the judge comments regarding $75 an hour. I won't even speak to that it will be totally redundant given the expert the uh, expert uh, knowledge of all the attorneys and your honor involved in this case and any other case we come to the court on regarding fees but um this was a extremely uh, difficult case judge most of the difficulty revolved around just handling the uh, defendant and um coordinating the defendant um thoughts on how things should go with what our experts were telling us and our investigators were telling us. So I believe the flat fee for each attorney would be, uh, anything less than the flat fee would be totally confiscatory, Judge. Thank you so much. Thank <clears> you. <throat> Ms. Cashman. Your Honor, I'm asking for the $15,000 flat fee, and I'm also asking to be reimbursed for the $1,800 that I paid um, to an expert and JAC has a copy of my check front and back um, on this case. One of the issues that always has to be addressed when there are multiple attorneys and I was the eighth attorney and the fourth private court appointed attorney is making a case that is old by purposes for reasons of being on the docket for a long time a priority and putting aside other work one of the um unusual things about miss boone's case was when i did withdraw for ethical reasons the court found that she had forfeited her right to an attorney um she is charged by information with second degree murder, there was an unusual amount of media attention on this case. Um, the facts are she's accused of putting her boyfriend in a suitcase. He later dies. There is a video of this that went viral. Um, because the video went viral, because of coverage by Court TV, News Nation, Fox, the local channels, the Sentinel, and websites such as Know Your Lawyer, Legal Bites, and Bruce Rivers, 
you had to review not just the banker boxes of discovery and work done by the previous attorneys, but um, stay up to date with what potential jurors were viewing if they were watching it on the internet. Um, there was a lot of correspondence between the defendant and the court. Obviously, I had to review all that. The most recent piece of correspondence when I was Ms. Boone's counsel was the 58-page letter that she wrote. And again, letter, all these letters are published. They're analyzed. Um, I, like previous counsel, spent an inordinate amount of time with Ms. Boone. I spent over 20 hours during my period of time that I was representing her. I believe that for multiple reasons, the court can find that this case was extraordinary and unusual, and that it would be confiscatory to not pay me the flat fee. And having provided the um, requested proof based on the procedure for reimbursable costs, it's my understanding that Mr. Lake is not objecting to me being reimbursed for the $1,800 that I spent to retain an expert who did not have a contract with JAC. Thank you, Mr. Lake. Yes, Your Honor, just briefly. Uh, the, the, uh, so long as the first, the issue of the $1,800, JAC has no objection to that reimbursement. That's more of a technicality. The court did approve the expert, but it's just the attorney getting reimbursed or the expense that we have no objection to. So that's a non issue. We you see that in the order. As far as the fees are concerned, the issue here is, is that other than Ms. Cashman, who submitted an hourly statement of 118 hours, now the other attorneys actually submitted hourly statements, so we are kind of constrained by the statute. The problem is the statute only allows up to 200% of the flat fee uh, in the absence of hourly statements. In other words, you know, the the way that the statute would very unusually, but what essentially what it says is the court can award up to 200% of the flat fee without, and then it can only go above that if it finds that the case is statutory and then can compensate the attorneys at a rate of $75 an hour. So that's where we get into a little bit of a difficulty here because double the flat fee here would be 30,000, which is less than each of the attorneys if you question 15,000 each, which would be 45,000. And as far as, and at that point, looking at the statute, what we have is Ms. Catherine, she got 118 hours in. That would represent a rate of $75 an hour, $8,850. Based on Mr. Bankowitz's statement, he had 175 hours in, which would be $13,125 at that rate. And Mr. Hobson, they just basically said about 200 hours, which would be $15,000. That's the issue, Your Honor, is that. I mean, technically, compensation has to be at a rate of $75 an hour for it to go above $30,000. And so, beyond that, I mean, ultimately, but we leave it to court discretion to determine reasonable fee for each attorney. And we acknowledge that this, I don't, I don't think we, did, we can even begin to dispute that this is not an extraordinary unusual case. It's just that what the statute says is, what, is how the compensation structure is set up. And we have to we have to argue with the court to move to follow that structure. Um, Mr. Lake, if if one uh, bills hourly, can the others be flat fee under the under your interpretation of the statute? That until you get to double the flat fee, yes, at work. But once you go above double the flat fee, then at that point it really should be a compensation should be seventy five an hour. However, we also acknowledge that we. About other cases like this, where the court is worth the full flat fee to each attorney, and we've never taken it up. So, I mean, it's, it's essentially we have to argue that you can only go to 20% of the flat fee, and at that point, it has to be it has to go hourly. But we also acknowledge that realistically, there is no attorney on the case, other than somebody who might take the case pro bono for other reasons. There's no case, no attorney on the surface of this planet that would take this case for 15000 Your Honor. Your Honor, if I may address, I, I don't the need court. To, I don't need to to do that, Mr. Hobson. Thank you. 
Um, yes. I, I am going to award the $15,000 flat fee to Mr. Bankwitz and Ms. Cashman and a $15,000 hourly fee to Mr. Hobson. Uh, Ms. Cashman will be reimbursed her $1,800 in costs. I will issue an order to that of, uh, on each of these cases. You've sent me orders electronically, and I will e-sign them. I've got it here. And uh, e-file them in just a moment. Mr. Lake, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. All right. Anything further with regard to this matter? Uh, Your Honor, I would just state that I, um, I'm not asking for this um, uh, cost, but I, I paid over $400 in photocopy fees cost for material that I sent to Ms. Bone along the way. But I, 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 I'm not asking for that uh, to be refunded to me. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hobson.